Hi guys, welcome to another Excessive Gamer Review, my series of thoughts of current and maybe not so current games because some oldies are worth looking back to. If you're hoping for an overall score, a number or anything that remotely depicts any form of scaling system whereby you get to gauge the worthiness of the material, well, this isn't the place to get it. But what you'll actually get is my most humble and honest opinion on what I think works and doesn't work in any given title. So, if you like what you see, or dislike it so much that you can't stop watching, well, then why not subscribe? With all those formalities out of the way, let's get going. Catherine is a Japanese puzzle game developed by Atlas. It released February 2011 for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. From the very developers that brought you Persona. You take on the role of protagonist Vincent Brooks while he deals with a case of adultery after having slept with a girl called Catherine in the most nonsensical approach you couldn't imagine. You couldn't even begin to think how anyone could have come up with this stuff. However, as bizarre as this game is, it works and keeps you longing for more. To cut to the chase, the story and gameplay relation is extremely peculiar and the concept behind the story is based on an urban legend. As far as the legend goes, those who commit adultery are haunted in their dreams by this living, breathing and ever-changing tower comprising of blocks and very creepy depictions of, well, I think it's best to call them monsters but they're pretty much just a mashup of the women in your life. In Vincent's case, they're sinister, sometimes very revealing, grotesque, hideous looking creatures. In reality, this is really hard to explain. You really have to get involved to understand the permanent scarring these boss characters will cause you. The concept is to get to the top of the tower before the timer runs out, or during the boss stages before any of the bosses get a hold of you and consume your very existence. If you do get through though, you obviously move on and scale higher in the tower. However, if you don't, you simply die. So yeah, you die in real life. There are many things I like about Catherine and one of the greatest things is knowing that you aren't dealing with this alone. You're going through these nightmares with many others who have also committed adultery and they are represented as sheep. Yes, you heard me, sheep. Funny note to add, Vincent, to you, the player, appears as a human character but to everyone else he appears as just another sheep. There is a central hub area which you visit after every tower has been completed, whereby you get to learn about each sheep's story as well as purchase items from them, such as extra blocks and uh, Mystic Pillow which grants you uh, continues. Generally speaking, the hub section and learning about each sheep and how they got there is quite amusing to say the least, even though the reason they're there is obviously of a serious nature. There are sections between the tower where you'll visit Vincent's regular watering hole, the Stray Sheep, with his three close friends where they indulge in some sake and reminisce about good old days when adultery wasn't a thing, and you weren't being tormented by a huge vagina with a face on it, sprouting legs and a visceral tongue lashing at you continuously. Yes, this is actually a thing. So yeah, you can expect a lot of talking during these sections with your friends giving you advice on how to best approach this bad situation you found yourself in. Also, a nice little touch during these sections is that your mobile phone acts as your link to Catherine. That's Catherine with a K and not a C. Vincent's actual girlfriend, where you get to dictate what best responses are for her text messages. This small game in itself adds a great little dynamic to these sections to help establish a good or bad meter which goes one way or the other depending on certain choices made during the game. As far as the graphics go, it's aged rather well. At the end of the day, the bulk of the game consists of a tower of blocks, so don't expect amazing graphical fidelity here. However, for what it's worth, it looks good enough if maybe a little pixelated in comparison to what we have in this generation, but that's to be expected. The cutscenes are manga, as in manga style, and these actually look superb. If somewhat hazy, but that's intentional due to the developers creating the effect of being in a dream state. I think considering it's a uh, 8 year shelf life, Catherine has managed to keep looking relatively young. I've got an issue with the game's loading times though. I know the game is old and runs on last generation consoles and therefore the processing power isn't what it is nowadays but expect about a minute or so between stages. By no means the worst, but definitely not quick. Catherine is going to run for approximately 12 hours if you focus on the story alone. Yet if you plan on doing all the extras you're looking at quite easily adding another 20 hours or so. Another problem I feel I should point out is the time it takes between the puzzle sections. The time you spend playing Vincent in the bar at times can drag on. Don't get me wrong, these sections are fun, especially talking to all the people hanging around the bar. There are certainly some interesting characters to talk to. However, initially during these sections it felt fresh and was a nice breath of fresh air between the tower stages. But the deeper I got into the game, I couldn't help but feel sometimes these sections were far too extended and I saw myself just wanting to get back to the tower. The overall style of the game and how it is presented stands the test of time. 
Catherine really does work nowadays and is still as charming and weird as it was on release date. If you haven't tried it and you've got a liking for things dark and twisted, then Catherine should be in your library. But as far as I'm concerned, you should at least check it out, even if it's not there. Because Catherine is one of the weirdest and most disturbing puzzlers out there. It's hideously grotesque, yet beautiful and charming, steamy, sexy, addictive and hilarious. It's just full-blown contradictive. There aren't many titles I can think of that can encompass all these traits and do it this well. I can honestly say that Catherine has certainly become nostalgic for me. Ever since I completed the main storyline 8 years ago it has been tugging at my gaming heartstrings ever since. There aren't titles out there that pull me back as much as Catherine has so I'm glad to see they've finally decided to revamp the game and release it on the PS4 this September. Anyway, that's all from me guys, please remember to like the video, let me know in the comments section if there's a game you'd like me to review for next time. Remember guys, if you ain't playing rock hard, then you ain't playing at all. I'm Excessive Gamer, until next time.